live. We're live. Woohoo! Hey. I figured we'll out how to you do know, it from a new we'll computer. Ooh. Kyle, you we are my are uh, you are my tech guru. We're live. That only Woo-hoo. ranks number two behind the Chan Man. He's one. I guess behind. that's three, two. You rank you rank the big two behind the Chan Man. Hey, Suzanne Cooper. Hey, Susanna Arnold Fitzgerald. Hey, Kimmy and Jim Moritz. Hey, Jill. Hey, Jana. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Jane. Hey, Claudia. Hey, Diana. See, I'm just proving that I know how to read. I haven't lost my ability to read during all the COVIDs. We're grateful for that. We're grateful for that. Hey, everybody. I am glad you all are here. And it's a gray cold. It's a gray cold, stupid day in terms of the weather, but it's a marvelous day for a chat with the pastors. Yes, Kyle? Guess where I am. Um, I would guess that you are at the Library of Congress. Close. There's enough books. I'm in my office. I don't I have know. to stay and, at home anymore. And so uh, just for geographical reference for our watchers and listeners... <laughs> Even though Kyle lives south of me, which is that direction, when he was at his house on my screen, he was north of me. Now that he is north of me in his office, he is south of me on the screen. This is why someone like me cannot deal with technology. There is nothing rational or logical about any of that. What is... (laughs) There is not no Kyle. Don't try to explain it. There is nothing. What is entirely fitting about about your your dissonance with this reality, though, is is that <laughs> it all deals with where you are. Well, yeah, the world revolves around me. Exactly. Exactly. Who has ever question? Who has ever had any questions about that? I, I nobody heard- that nobody that I know has any question about the fact that the world revolves. Around me, other than maybe Jesus, I'm willing. I'm willing to say, the world revolves more around Jesus than it does me. It is my orientation, and uh, therefore I get to ask the first question, Kyle. Oh, that was wow! See, see the segue. That was a great me and Oprah, transition. Me, 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 and Oprah know how to make segues. <laughs> smooth, smooth segues. So, Kyle. Yes. Mother's Day was Sunday. It was. And I know you have a mother. I do have a mother. And I have met her and enjoyed pleasant conversation with her. She is a nice lady. And I have come to understand some of your sense of humor from <laughs> visiting with her a number of times. <laughs> yeah. And I know how much she loves your nephew, Calvin. Yes. Because yes. they're both hilarious. They are. So, Kyle, how did you celebrate this one lovely woman who was willing to live with you and raise you and care for you and love you your whole life? Yes. Um, let's see. So, uh, we, we, I, I, Hope and I together made lunch for her, uh, including some of her favorite things like shrimp cocktail. Um, I grilled steak that was extra crispy a bit on the outside. Um, but it was good. I mean, it was really good. It just, it, T-bone? what, uh, no, was it, uh, T-bone? it was, uh, it was, a um, uh, it was a ribeye. Kansas city strip. It was, it was a Kansas city strip. Okay. Ribeye. Ribeye is good. Um, also no joke. I went to Costco to buy the, the steaks. They had exactly three packages of steaks left in the whole store. Really? And they were like, that's all we're going to have for three more days. So uh, I got two of them because it's only two in a package. So well, you know what? Price Chopper, Chiefs Chopper, and Hen House Chopper, Chiefs Hen House, and Chiefs um, and Chiefs High V have way more stakes than Chiefs Costco. Okay, well that's good to know. Just for future reference, maybe for Father's Day. Okay, excellent. So how else? Okay, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, else? you're fine. So uh, so we did that, and then. Um, uh, we got her flowers, of course. Um, and we got her some, some kitchen stuff as a gift. And 
my wife, I have to say, she converted me this week. I've Thank always, you, Jesus. We've been praying for this forever, Kyle. Tell us about your conversion. I've I've always been not a very um, uh, not a chocolate orange person. Chocolate and orange together, weird. Doesn't make sense. Reese peanut butter cup are put in orange packaging. Do you not like Reese peanut butter different. cups? That's different. I'm talking about the fruit. Oh, not orange. that kind of orange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Hope made a chocolate fudge uh, orange cake that nearly changed my life and definitely changed my my beliefs about chocolate and orange together. It was marvelous. That's one of my f mother's favorite combinations. One Christmas, she got me a bunch of chocolate orange things. I believe knowing that I did not like it, and she offered to just take that off my hands. But uh, so we had that. That was great. And See, then the last gifted. thing. She's gifted. She's very gifted intellectually. Um, my dog Gunner made a Mother's Day card for, oh. for Hope. Uh, and so I actually have it here. That's from the oh. day that we got her. Uh, let's see. There's a, a happy Black dog. Gunner. Yep, yep, yep. And then uh, Gunner taking a nap on Hope. I hope that shows up. And then this is Gunner. Oh. <laughs> this is her Sunday asleep with her tongue out. <laughs> so Gunner so, made that so which so which one of those pictures is going to show up on one of the pew chairs for a uh, worship recording? If I had to guess all of them. <laughs> so, but I am very excited about that. We've got some pictures. I haven't uh, on email. I haven't checked the box upstairs, but I'm, I'm thrilled for that to have some people here. Well, yeah. I tell you, you know, pastors have always been creative in inflating the numbers of people at worship. So, <laughs> you know, Kyle, including three pictures of Gunner, you yep. know, and several pictures of Hope, that works well for our numbers, for Absolutely. our count. Absolutely. So that's not a category that they have on our vital statistics. How many flat congregants attended worship? I will get a hold of the district superintendent. And I will suggest that they think outside the box, yeah. so to speak, and start including flat congregants because clearly flat congregants don't really talk back. And, and sometimes that's a good thing. <laughs> what did you do? Wow. I feel like there's some things that I should ask about that, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> what did, what did you do for mother's day? Reverend Dr. Nanette? Well, I have perhaps mentioned on my blog and maybe even on chat with the pastors a couple of times that I have suggested to my mother a time or two that I drive out there and sit on their driveway and visit with them. And my mother has said to me uh, both of those times, what part of sheltering at home do you not understand? So uh, I just didn't ask permission this time. I finally, I finally realized that the whole, the whole pro, the the whole problem with that was asking permission. <laughs> oh, okay. So you would have, you would have thought I would have learned that when I was sixteen, um, but I've gotten older. So I got up at four o'clock in the morning, and I left Kansas City because I wanted to do it all in one day because I was not about to go into their home. And I was certainly not about to stay in their home. So it had to be an all-in-one-day drive. Um, and I wanted to be in Hayes by 9.15 because I knew I would still have internet connection to watch the service and worship. Okay. And then, to be honest with you, I watched you while I was driving then. So I watched the service from, it. initially I started out in the McDonald's parking lot. <laughs> But the McDonald's parking lot in Hayes was not really good internet connection. So I moved to the subway parking lot in Hayes and it was fantastic connection. Who would have guessed? I know, right? I mean, I would rather have French fries than like subway chips, but whatever. Um, so I watched, I worshiped at 915 and then I um, went through the drive through because I felt like you know, I should buy something since I had sort of parked in their space, you know, for a long time. Sure. And and then um, I started driving home and I had your service on. And so I propped you on my steering wheel 
So this was not dangerous, no. by the way, mm. um, because my eyes were straight ahead, but I could still hear you. I could not really text. I texted at the very beginning of your service, but I didn't text then through your service. So you made the trip from Hayes to Phillipsburg very, very, very enjoyable. Well, wonderful. So thank you, Kyle. I thought you had a great sermon Sunday. Thank you. I'm serious. I'm serious about that, by the way. Um, and then I I called my parents and said, well, what's for lunch? And they said, well, we're going to your sister Belinda's. And I said, oh, that's important for me to know. And my mom said, um, why? Why is that important? And I said, because that's where I should show up then. So I think she was, um, I think she was nicely surprised. Um, <laughs> she, she was not excited that I insisted on wearing a mask part of the time. And I would not sit at the table with them to have lunch. So I guess I didn't care so much about my nephew and niece-in-law who's with the table I sat with with them. <laughs> they put you um, at the kids' table? Uh, yeah, I was at the kids' table, actually. Okay. Yeah, and actually, that was way more fun anyway, because my three great nephews were at that table as well. <laughs> but we were we were six feet apart, actually. My sister had done a fantastic job of spacing everybody. And then um, it was a little chilly that afternoon, but we went outside. And the most dangerous thing I did, actually, was I played two-on-two -two basketball with my great nephews and my two my two great nephews who are in the sixth grade and eighth grade were uh, the opposite team from my nephew, great nephew, Tate, who I believe is in the second grade and me. Um, and so they did lower the rim of the basket. And anytime I couldn't defend somebody, I just tackled them because that's what, that's what ants can do who are, who, who may be older than them, but they're also way bigger than them. And tougher. So I still have the ability to um, to take them down. Yep. And then, <laughs> uh, and then I drove back so, across the state. Of, it was gorgeous, actually. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous day to drive. The Flint Hills are green, green, green. Um, and I only had to stop once to get gas and I didn't go in anywhere and I wore my mask and I used a paper towel to do the, to do the gassy thingy. So I hope I, I, I just, my dad was really kind of mad that I would not hug. Um, but I got to wave at them and that made my heart a lot happier. Excellent. So, so that I told them. We will always remember Mother's Day 2020. We will. Oh my goodness, but will we ever. I didn't get chocolate cake with orange mixed in. So I'm not sure my family loves my mother because no one provided her <laughs> chocolate cake with orange. Oh. So Kyle, so yeah. Kyle, I have I have another question. Okay. This is a total surprise. I've been thinking about this. To be I, I love these. Okay. So you have a smartphone. I do. Do you have any, do you have any games on your phone? I actually don't. I, I, I think so. I'm not sure. So I got Seriously? A, you don't know? Okay. I've got one. Um, I've got a Sudoku game. Mm -hmm. Do you play it? Y yeah. I mean, Kyle, seriously, I cannot believe you had to hesitate and figure out if you had a game on your phone. Well, okay, but but this is this, there's a reason. I have a good excuse. Um, uh, I got a new phone at the beginning of the year, and I didn't know what what transferred over. So, okay, that was the, I guess that was six months ago. <laughs> but but that also, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I have. I'm going to stop defending myself. I have Sudoku. Uh, I believe that is my, that is my only game. I'm not a very fun person in that. Well, Kim Moritz does not have it. She, she says no games for me. I, I, it's a phone. I, okay. Now, I, well, I only have two games. Okay. I have my go-to game, which is spider solitaire. 
Okay. Because I can because I can think while I'm playing it. Yes. I can think about other things while I'm playing it. And then I have Bejeweled because there is no other game but Bejeweled. But it's a particular it, it's a particular version of Bejeweled, I think. Um, and I can't remember what it's called, but I but I highly recommend it. Okay. So how do you decide what apps to put on your phone? Um, oh, I don't know. I, I, most of mine are functional. Um, so like I have more photo editing apps than I have games. Some of them are serious. Some of them are not. I can cut out your face and put it on a cat with cut paste <laughs> app. Uh, I did that for my brother-in-law's birthday. Uh, I, I put, that is hilarious. I put my in-laws cat on a tiger king photo you know like you do um and, but i have like lightroom which is like a real editing software um i i'll tell you this i have too much news and garbage on my phone i know uh monday morning i woke up uh i read five stories on facebook and two of them did not uh brighten my monday morning so i decided that i was probably going to uh, not do that again for the rest of the week. It was a sign. Um, but yeah, I don't know. what. How do you, what is your metric for deciding apps? Well, so I'm going through this whole sort of um, coronavirus crisis midlife thing <laughs> where I'm trying to, because <laughs> why not? And so I'm trying to discern okay. what is a value in every different part of my life. And so I carry my phone around like it's become a permanent attachment, it feels like, to my hand. Yep. So I started looking at it and thinking, why are, are, is everything on here something that is enriching? Is everything on here something that is useful? Is, 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 are there things on here that bring beauty in my life or allow me to relax or... And some of the answers to those were yes, and some of the answers to those were no. And I wasn't, I'm not exactly sure. I probably need to check with you or Chandler how to get stuff off of there, how to, how to, how to, how to take some of those little pictures that mean something off of there. Icons. Mm -hmm. Yes, those. Because I don't know how to take them off other than when I by mistake do something and all of them are shaking and they have little X's by them. And I don't know how you get to that place. I just know that sometimes it happens and it scares me because I think I'm going to lose everything. And so I punch the button to make it all stop shaking and having X's on it. So there's got to be an easier way than that, I'm guessing. <laughs> there has to be. <laughs> but, uh, but I think that, the you know, the, so the serious question in all of that is for you and for our whoever still left listening. <laughs> I so think the, everybody the serious, left. The, I know. So the, so this, because we're being who we are. So the serious question is, um, how, you know, do you want an ongoing basis or intermittently like decide? I don't want all these new sources on my phone. I don't want to see them. I don't want to connect with them. Or do you say, you know what? I know they're on there, but they don't bother me. How do you how do you set priorities on what you what input you bring into your life? Yeah, um, I, so so I mean I think in some ways this season has invited right that sort of discernment process, um, which is not probably altogether different from how I've done that in the past. So there are times where I like have reserved. Uh, remember airplanes when we used to go on flights? So there would be times where in my mind I said, like, on this flight to such and such place or the first leg of this flight, I'm going to go through and clean out my photos and my documents and my apps and, like, do that on my phone because it's a time similar to right now, although it's more condensed, where, where you're kind of held captive or limited in what you can do. And that's something that you can do to help clean things up. So that, that happens occasionally, um, but probably if I'm being honest, what happens more often is um, uh, <laughs> I get the wobbly apps or, uh, or I'm trying to record my sermon, say, from my living room on my phone 
and my stinking phone runs out of space and says to me, you need to clear some things out of your life, declutter a little bit. Uh, and I very calmly say, okay, phone, thank you for that invitation. I'm so glad the universe gave me this opportunity right now. Um, obviously. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, I, I mean, I think that that's, I, I don't have a set pattern for it. Um, but when I get frustrated by Facebook or the news or overwhelmed, you know, then, then it's like, okay, I need to settle down a bit. Well, a couple of things. Kelly Razor says games on your phone does not make you fun. So Kelly, someday we need to, uh, have coffee and talk about that. Because I believe you are a jigsaw puzzle aficionado. And by the way, you can get jigsaws on your phone to put together. Do you know what? Which oh. are, they're more frustrating than real ones. Okay, that sounds absolutely awful. Hope Hope does like coloring on her phone, which seems ridiculous to me. But she That sounds it. relaxing. That sounds relaxing. That's what she says. It only seems stressful to me. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> So Kelly well, you Razor, still have the blue, you still have the blue lights coming at you. Um, I think it's Josh Lewis who said, once you have something, no, it's Chandler. All apps are permanent. They're stuck there forever. That's a lie. I I'm think he's, I think he's being sarcastic he, at he my lack wanna, of he technological be prowess. Support. I, I think he is making fun of me. Um, oh, and Karen, Karen Collins Brown says we are still here waiting to learn about icons. Me too, Karen. Me too. Okay. This is like my nephews who say, oh, Aunt Nan, you just do X, Y, Z, blah, 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 punch this X and function and this and this and this, and you'll get what you want. Okay. That's not helpful when I'm trying to figure out how to turn my computer on. <laughs> you know, don't come at me with all this, you know, control alt delete stuff. Just like come out, just like. Keep it at just, 101 level. That's exactly right. That's where I want to be. <laughs> so um, it's so it's three twenty three at three twenty six. I'm going to click off, and Kyle's going to do the stand up uh, for us both because I have to go to a meeting. And and you did and, not and those communicate who, that. Those of you who are left listening, um, can you imagine what I'm going to be like hosting a Zoom meeting where I'm the chair of the district committee that's working? <laughs> No, I will. I I will serious myself down into pure pastor mode. But um, anyway, um, time has gone extremely fast this time, Kyle. I want hope. What was I what, I, hope. what was all your what was all this question about? Where where were you going with that? All the apps I just on my phone. I, I I'm just interested in 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 this particular COVID Corona yucky weird time. It's like there are times when I just get obsessed by things and and the icons on my phone last night were really bothering me and I didn't want them all. And so I was trying to go through and say, okay, what don't I want on here? Okay. Because I never used it. And I mean, that doesn't mean it's not effective, but it's like there's stuff on there I don't even know. I don't know how it got on there. I don't know what it's for. It scares me because I figure if I punch it, Somebody will hack into my identity and steal my heart. So um, I was just like, I was like, is that sort of symbolic of what we're going through right now? Because every every other Facebook thing is saying, be careful for, oh, what, what do they call people that are liars? But gaslighters, be careful for gaslighting. And so then I had to look up gaslighting because... I know that back in the olden days, that's how they lit their streets. And why would that be a bad thing? So I'm still trying to kind of figure out all of that. Oh, that's a good um, question. We should talk about gaslighting next week. I know. But <laughs> but so I don't know what icons I punch if somebody's going to be on there trying to convince me that they have my stimulus check and that I have to, you know, give them my social security number and they live somewhere far away. So um, all of that's a little bit sarcastic, but, um, <laughs> but I've just been looking at priorities, okay. right? And so it used to be, we would say in, in, in seminary, they would say, you can tell me about your priorities, but then let me see your checkbook. Mm. Because when we used, when we used to have olden days checkbooks, 
you would record all your checks and and our professors would say, you know, we'll be able to tell your priorities by where you spend your money. Well, now I think that's broadened a little bit, right? Because we have all these smart devices. So I wonder if how we decide what our priorities are is maybe how what what are the icons we have on our devices and what are the ones we actually use? Um, and, and do we know why they're on there? And are they part of what overwhelm us? Hmm. I, I put on and then I put on... Um, I put a priority or whatever you do on Facebook so that you see stuff more often. I, I initially put that on uh, coronavirus cases in in Johnson County, mm-hmm. and then I took it off. And then I took it off. I didn't hide it. I just put it in the background because sometimes I want that information, but I don't want it flying at my face sort of all the time. So anyway, that's where I was going with that. And everybody, it's 326, and I have to go be a professional chairperson of a district committee where the district superintendent is also in attendance. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off, Kyle, and you have fun. Okay, great. With all, with all, the, with all the people. And I'm going to still watch it on Facebook and try to do my, um, <laughs> try to do my uh, Zoom at the same time. See you later. Bye. Oh, goodness gracious. So when you work with somebody like Nanette, uh, who doesn't tell you that that she's going to sign off? Um, please forgive the extremely zoomed in picture of my face that you're getting right now. Uh, I didn't plan for that. Well, listen, um, I think actually that's a great challenge for us in this week um, to think about what it is that we find ourselves uh, focusing on. Um, and so perhaps that can be a challenge for you. <laughs> I'm now watching in delay on Facebook as my face moves, which is rather interesting. Um, but anyway, friends, uh, it is it is good each week to kind of check in. Um, I was I was laughing at you all's comments. Um, we actually did have a plan when we began this. We didn't stick with it at all. Um, but uh, it, I think it it is also a good reminder that sometimes we need just to be silly and to laugh uh, and to enjoy. Uh, the moments uh, that, that we're in, uh, difficult as they are. Um, so know that that we're continuing to do that. You have permission to do that for yourself. Um, uh, as we go through the week, if your uh, jigsaw puzzles are driving you crazy or you have too many apps on your phone, you have permission to, to walk away from those, but just uh, to, to find joy in the midst of, of what is going on uh, in this season. And uh, so I hope we've done a little bit of that for you this afternoon. Um, we are always grateful for this time uh, and, and grateful for you coming and being a part of this conversation today. So uh, next week, we'll see you back at three o'clock. Uh, we'll probably both be in the same building again, so you never know what's going to happen. Uh, but anyway, friends, thank you so much for, uh, <laughs> for being here. Uh, I'm going to go supervise the meeting that Nanette is on right now, uh, try to maybe keep her in, in check a little bit. So um, anyway, thank you for being here, friends. God bless you all. We will we will see you soon. Uh, next week, we'll have uh, more, more to talk about and probably more shenanigans, if I were to guess, because I know us. Anyway, God bless you. See you soon.